just arrived at our B&B. Um, we always stop at the B&B on these French trips, especially travelling so far. I mean, we've done nearly 15 hours of travelling since I left my house, so I'm absolutely knackered. Um, we're about 40 minutes from the lake now, which is, I think from Calais, we've done just over 400 miles, so um, through central France, obviously. Had some horrendous weather around Paris as well, crazy torrential rain. Um, it felt like the van was sort of water skiing at some points, but um, yeah, we're, uh, it's just gone midnight. So the idea is now we'll obviously get our heads down, have a decent night's sleep, um, and then we'll be obviously at the lake, fresh faced and uh, full of energy, ready to go to war for the next seven days. Uh, yeah, cannot wait to get there, that's for sure. But uh, for now, I'm going to get my head down because I'm absolutely battered, and um, yeah, I'll catch up with you lakeside tomorrow. So uh, good night from me, and I'll uh, see you in the morning. good evening from France. Um, losing the light as you can tell so apologies for that. It's been an absolutely mega long day uh, obviously with all the travelling. Although we did have a, a nice B&B stop like I said but I uh, don't know it's just been one of those days where it's just taken forever to set up but uh, it's about oh, it's probably about half seven at night now. Uh, we've just come back from having dinner over at the gravel bar. Uh, the gravel bar here at Moorlands is like, a, like an angler's bar where we all eat, have a beer and whatnot. So uh, yeah, check the rods out as well. Single sticks. How carpy is that? <laughs> but um, yeah, so first night, uh, all hopes are high and uh, whatnot. We're all uh, it's all good. Um, I'll just quickly run you through what's happening on the rods. I haven't gone crazy and piled loads of baiting because I don't really know what the last sort of group of uh, carpers put in or how much has gone in. So uh, I know this swim was very quiet, um, but obviously I don't know how much bait I'm actually fishing over. So just to quickly run you through what's happening, um, obviously one, two, three, we'll start with this one here. Um, this was, I'm only fishing about nine wraps. Um, it's quite weedy out there, but um, I found a nice little uh, clear area in there, some silt and whatnot. So uh, I've just sprayed probably about a kilo over that one, fishing out on a snowman setup. Uh, that rod, I've gone for the, uh, the old uh, Odyssey Triple X. Um, obviously it's in its 10th year. This year was the 10th anniversary. So I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to bring that to France. Uh, so that's the uh, right hand rod. Uh, these two rods here, I've got, sorry, the middle rod is on the live system. Just fishing that as a cork ball popper. Again, you can just see out there the sort of the aerator just in the corner of the screen there. I'm probably about a rod length off that, just to the left of that. You can see two little sticks. So that's the sort of area. Again, it's nice and clear. And um, yeah, just fishing that cork ball pop up just off to the side. Again, about a kilo of live system gone over the top of that. And then uh, left hand rod over here. I'll just spin you around a little bit. Apologies for my mug. I'll move out the way. Um, you can see that sort of dead tree on the corner, if you like. Uh, I'm in line with that. Uh, just as the water darkens off, just to the left of that ripple. Um, and with that, I've gone for a lovely little mix on that one. Um, I've gone for some eight mil and uh, eight mil betaine and trout pellets, and I've mixed that in with some ten mil Pacific tuna, giving it a good lashing of the uh, the natural mix or natural natural liquid. Um, yeah, that's all fuzzed up in together. All oh, love that liquid is absolutely awesome. It's got it's basically all minced up squid and bloodworm and mussel. It's all proper all goodies and that stuff. And I've probably put about. I've probably about 12 of the medium spoms out there and I'm just fishing that on a little pop-up just to the right hand side of that little northern special and uh, yeah that's how we're playing the first night out so fingers crossed one of us can uh, bank one of the absolute monsters at uh, 
swim round in this place. Uh, opposite me, we've got Mr. Dan Chu, Big Chewy. Um, like I say, we're sort of sharing the same water, so hopefully between one of us, um, or between two of us, should I say, um, we, we should winkle one out. Uh, there's fish been showing all over the lake today, and uh, yeah, here's hoping. I'll uh, keep you posted through the rest of the week, and uh, yeah, I'll stop rabbiting on now, and uh, I'm going to get my head down because I am absolutely knackered. <laughs> right, hopefully speak to you soon. Obviously we've done our first night and uh, we had absolutely horrendous weather yesterday, just constantly trashed with rain all day. I say horrendous, horrendous for sitting out in it but perfect for fishing. Fish were jumping everywhere and whatnot. And uh, yeah, we've done our first night and uh, we've got fish in the bag. Get in! Uh, it resulted last night in a £51 mirror, uh, a mirror known as Black Spot. So absolutely buzzing to get the first one under my belt. And um, obviously to, uh, to get a 50 as well is just fantastic. So all in all, one very chuffed angler. Um, come on the middle rod on the uh, cork ball pop up. It's funny, I just went, I got my mate Mick who's just further down the bank from me. He had two 40s last night and uh, I just went round to photograph his last night. Got back to me swim, literally sat on that step and the, the, literally the middle bobbin just picked up slowly and just off it went. Very slowly, tick, 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 hardly any, no screaming run at all. Lifted into it, felt like a, you know, a decent fish and um, yeah, a couple of minutes and it was in the net. Not not a really big heavy fight to be fair. It sort of sort of just coaxed him in and the, in she went. Uh, when we first looked at it in the net, um, we were like, oh, it's a top 30. But uh, when we lifted it out, there's the belly and uh, yeah, 51 pounder. And uh, like I say, mirror known as Black Spot. Keith Moore, who owns a place, come out and verified it all and whatnot. So yeah, very, very happy angler. Um, breakfast is at about half an hour's time. I'm not sure what happened on the other bank last night. So uh, we'll catch up with the other boys in about half an hour, uh, see what happens and uh, I'll speak to you shortly. But it's uh, a perfect day for it, got drizzle, bit of wind and um, yeah, who's open for another chunk, eh? Come on the live system! Well, as you can see, we are bivvy bound. Um, it's just about gone midday. Obviously we've had our breakfast, uh, very quiet night on the lake really. Uh, ben on the other side, he had a small fish. Uh, that's like a high double. Uh, Dan who's sort of opposite me on that point, uh, he lost one early hours of the morning uh, and that's about it really. Um, obviously this cold weather's come in now, lots and lots of rain so obviously this is pulling the temperature of the lake down. To think it was sort of 32, 33 degrees last week and today it's 15 degrees so it's a massive shock to the carp system I'd have thought. So uh, yeah more than happy to get off the mark with that awesome 50 pounder last night. I've just recast all three rods back on their spots, topped up again on the bait. Uh, I've done a bit of a mixture this time, I've mixed the live and the Odyssey together. Just put about half a kilo on each spot. And uh, yeah, we'll see what today brings. Obviously I think this rain set in right through the rest of the day into this evening. Obviously we'll be reeling in for um, dinner later tonight. And um, I'll probably speak to everybody then. So uh, yeah, speak to you in a bit. Enjoy the rain. Right, I have literally just had a run on the middle rod in the rain. I've got Mr. Chu looking after him for me. But uh, the prize is in the net. Again on that live system, which is on the spot. Sort of just by that aerator. But uh, yeah, looks should go 4-0 this one. Looks an angry carp, so no doubt he's going to beat the hell out of me on the bank. <laughs> right, we'll get the mat and everything sorted and uh, get the beastie out. But uh, yeah, chuff that as. Same rod, the middle rod again. Take it on that live system, pop ball pop up. Orangey looking thing. There we go. 37 2. That'll do, wouldn't it? Middle of the day bite, wasn't expecting that. But uh, absolutely good for that. Fish 
number two. Right, here we are again, second night, and it's come good for us again. This is the, uh, the left hand rod, when we put out that those 10 mil boilies, just topped it up last night with some uh, 18 mil live system, and it's resulted in this awesome looking 49 pounder. And the best thing about it, there's another one in the net waiting to come out as well. But this is this beastie, but yeah, 49. What an absolute awesome beast. <laughs> right, I'm not going to waffle too much. I'm going to get this fella back because obviously there's another one waiting. But uh, mwah, thank you, Morelands. Yes! <sighs> right, second fish of the morning here. Uh, the other one just shy of 50. 49, was it the case? 14. 49, 14. 14. 14. So, uh, yeah, give it another hour of feeding, it would have been a 50. but. Uh, Definitely a new 50 for more than within a week or so when the next guy has it. Uh, this is a, this one just swung past 40 as well. And uh, yeah, what an awesome start. It's Monday, it's 6 a.m. And this is the fourth fish of the trip. A lovely skinny mirror at 40 pound. Happy days indeed. Well, I'll be looking forward to breakfast this morning anyway. <laughs> but uh, what a start. What a place. Mwah. Yes! <laughs> Wicked. Like that will do. Nice. Well, good morning. It is the Monday now, going into the third day. Um, like I say, absolutely buzzing to get those two 40 pounders last night. Uh, well, I say last night, it was six o'clock this morning, but obviously it's quite dark over here. It doesn't get light till sort of seven. Um, but yeah, what an absolute buzz. Um, sort of going into the third day and we've had a 50, two 40s and a, and a 37. So yeah, absolutely buzzing. <laughs> um, just happy as well, that last fish, the, the low 40 that came on the, the left hand rod over that spotted area with all that pellet and stuff that we put in. So um, yeah, chuff that's come good sort of those things just keep on trusted in the spots you know i know it was clear out there the bait was right the rig was presented it's just a case of just trusting what you found you know i see a lot of people that they'll go 24 hours in france not not have a fish off a spot and then change the spot but um yeah, literally just sit on your hands and um, they will find that bait and uh yeah result in the bag um right so i'm just enjoying my first coffee um i'm gonna sit back now chill out till breakfast time what i'll do i'll take you on a tour of the fishery later in the week um i'll reel in and go around each swim see all the boys as well uh, saying that ben as well had a 52 pound mirror yesterday so uh, well done that man he leads the way in biggest fish for the week um but uh yeah i'll uh, i'll take you a tour of like the gravel bar which is like the anglers bar where we eat and stuff and um, yeah, see what you think. But uh, it's an absolutely stunning venue. Anyone thinking of coming to France, definitely recommend Morelands. It is the one. Uh, like I say, we've got another what, five nights left, so God knows what's going to happen. If it carries on as it does, I'm in for an absolutely red letter week. But uh, I'm going to shut up now, enjoy my coffee, and uh, I'll catch up with you boys in a bit. And girls, and girls. We're away. literally just about to reel in. I was going to go for a shower and have breakfast and uh, yeah right and rods come good. Hopefully we can navigate this boy in. Wrong side is it? It's quite weedy to this right hand side. It is open eh?
resulted in a 47.10. But a wicked morning to be playing the car. We'll get him out now and show you the price. Here's the price at 47.10. Taking on the right hand rod. First one on this one. Literally we've had one on each rod this morning. It's a beautiful sunny morning in France. And it's resulted in this absolute cracker. I say, Mr. Moore is with us right now, and he's told me this is one of the coffee bean fish. And an absolute cracker it is too. Oosh. And another one, taken on the life system corporal pop-ups. Yes. <laughs> Mwah, what a week, and it's only Monday. Two forties, well three forties now in the morning. Wow, absolutely blown backwards yet again. The coffee bean fish. Bye bye. Every now and again, he gives us a bit of a message. So, just waiting for me next. There he is, old Ollie, the carp owl. Got to try and translate what it means, but um, anything more, Ollie? Anything? Hey, huh? Starting to go a bit crazy over here, fishing on my own. Ollie agrees. Social banks on the other one. I'm here on me Todd in the corner. So I'm going to go and grab me owl handbook. Find out what Mr. Ollie's trying to tell me. He's probably saying, shut up Dean and go to bed. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> right, good night from me. Right, middle rod's gone into meltdown guys. And we have quite a large common sitting in the net but we'll get all the mat and everything sorted now and see what the prize is it's just gone 10 o'clock at night that's my first one at this sort of time but uh yeah he's well behaved anyway until he gets to the mat <laughs> right we'll get everything sorted and get the beastie out there we go right mozzies everywhere uh, middle rods come good yet again that live system just keeps taking them again that cork ball pop up has resulted in a 39 <laughs> 39 4 common it's quite angry but oh, I'm very angry if he's going to be A for me but oh yeah there we go what an absolute cracking fish first common of the week and I'm blown away yes Monday night and a 39 is in my hands, yeah! <laughs> so, so happy right now. And it's 10 o'clock, wasn't getting them to the morning. So uh, yeah, first one at this time of night. They're back on the feed and back on the life system. 
So uh, I'll get this one back, get the rod back on the spot, and it'll probably be early hours of the morning I'll speak to you next time. But uh, what a result, and what a fish, yes! <laughs> Evening guys, uh, another prize on the mat. It's about 2 a.m. on the third night. Um, and we've got another mirror in the bag. This one 32 pound, left hand rod. Uh, I did have a fish earlier in the night, which was a 39 pound common. Uh, lovely looking fish, real nice and clean. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't put the bloody camera uh, autofocus on, so unfortunately the uh, photos of the common and the footage wasn't the best. But um, nevertheless, it was another fish. But um, yeah, here we go, this one. This is 32, and number seven of the trip. Nice scaly one, isn't he? Cracking looking fish. At 32 pound, well just over 32 this was. But uh, they all count. Ooh, hang on, he was a bit lively. He went into one be weed bed, into another weed bed, and the line was great in, and oh, I, was just, I was just thinking one of those where it's not gonna come in, but uh, yeah, finally, after a good scrap, she came in. But what an absolute awesome. I mean, this is a baby for what Moorlands have got holding in that lake. But um, like I said, I just, I love catching fish, no matter what size. So it said they're all a buzz to me. But yeah, what a wicked, wicked fish. Almost bloody English looking, isn't it, to be fair? That's what you get with Moorlands, you almost, it's almost like English fishing abroad, but you've got a chance of a 70. <laughs> but uh, we'll get this little Moorlands baby back and uh, here's hoping for the morning. So I'll speak to you guys at uh, sunrise. But uh, yeah, what a result, yes. Good morning, uh, hang on a minute, stop that, listen to a bit of golden oldies in the morning, can't help a bit of Motown eh, um, uh, but yeah just bring you up to date, it is where we are today, we are Wednesday, so uh, just over halfway now, We've got three nights left, a uh, very quiet night for me last night, I did have an occurrence at about, what was it, about half past four, massive screaming run and jumped out to it and there's a koi pew giving it all this in the line so we got all tangled up in there swam off and left me with a mess to sort out um, but I, I, I love the little critters really they are pretty cute to be fair but um, yeah it left me with a bit of carnage at half four so I buzzed the rods back onto the spots when I sorted all that out and then um, like I say nothing's happened since I really did think it was going to happen this morning um, I didn't even go for breakfast I had uh, one of the foot long breakfast roll brought to me uh, by Mr Moore himself as well, so uh, thank you Keith, <laughs> it was very nice as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just quickly run you through what's happening on the lake. Charlie last night had a 48 pounder uh, down the bottom end, so we're absolutely buzzing for him. He's chuffed, he's off the mark. Um, I think Mick in the swim down for me had a small one last night. Uh, other than that, yeah, quiet night. It did, um, like I say, it was a bright sunny day yesterday. Um, when it dropped dark, it was completely clear skies. The temperature dropped quite quickly. Um, and then it clouded back over sort of one in the morning and it started to warm up again but um yeah quiet quiet on the fish front that's for sure but like i say there's three days left so we're still plenty of time to bag one of the absolute massive chunks that swim around in this place but uh, what i'll do today i'll um, take you through some of the rigs that we're using that we've that's helped bank some of these fish we've had so far 
and then tomorrow I'll do a bit of a tour of the venue, show you the Anglers Lodge and some other swims and uh, just a bit of an insight to what makes this absolute amazing fishery what it is. So until then, I'm going to tie some rigs, uh, put the old golden Motown back on and uh, I will speak to you later this evening, if not before, with a fish. But uh, until then, everybody's talking at me. Of my mind. Don't start singing. Right, speak to you in a bit. <laughs> well, we're in. Middle of the day. Blazing hot. I wasn't expecting that run. Hopefully, we can get this boy in. taking a seat but it's resulted in this lovely new penny common he was pretty angry but just shy of 30 pound this one but it's going to be a for me there we go what a lovely perfect looking fish a baby from Orleans but uh, like I say it's always nice to have a bend in the rod in it and this one come off that little spotted area to the left but uh, middle of the day bite well chuck Um, in France, it is known as Big Fish Thursday. It is Thursday, but it's not a big fish. <laughs> uh, but it, it's a nice scaly mirror all the same. Just over 30 pound this one. 30 pound, four ounces. And uh, yeah, it's a lovely, lovely scaly one. A very... Uh, Anxious scaly one. I hope he hasn't splashed the lens. But if he's gonna sit still for us. Right. Come on, girl. Come on. Let's clean you down. Lovely colours. You don't seem to get it at night time. You can't really tell, but. Hey, about that beastie. Absolute cracking fish. So the future of this fishery is going to be absolutely unbelievable when they look like this. <laughs> Glorious looking carp and a nice 30 pounder. Happy days indeed, eh? Sweet as a nut. Oh God. More than welcome. Uh, it's just gone midnight, it's about half past 12 I think. So uh, still plenty of time for Big Fish Thursday. <laughs> and again, it's that middle rod again. It's been the sort of the main rod all week, really. But um, yeah, absolutely happy as you like. <laughs> right, let's get this one back. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Thursday morning. We're in the latter part of the week, but um, another stunning, stunning morning in France. 
Um, I did have another fish after I put that £30 back last night. I followed that up a couple of hours later with a £37 common. Absolutely perfect condition. The mouth was absolutely pristine. It was everything about it was like a new penny. Um, so yeah, very, very happy to get that one. Again, that came on that same rod, the middle rod, um, after I put the 30 back. I just buzzed it back out there, probably put two, three pouches of uh, the life system over the top again. And uh, yeah, it's gone again two hours later. So very, very happy to get that one. Um, it did drop really cold last night. It was everyone sort of uh, commented this morning how cold it dropped. It got down to sort of six, five degrees last night. So um, yeah, definitely felt that while playing the fish in the water. And obviously putting the common back as well. You, when you're standing in, obviously up to your shins, you can proper feel it. Um, but uh, yeah, that brings me up. I think it was fish number 10 for the week, that one. So all in all, cannot moan, it's all good. Um, we're actually in a swim at the moment called the Royal Box, which is the one, obviously I'm just up there in the Oaks. This is the one down from that. We've left that sort of empty this week because Ben's opposite, it gives him a bit more water. And then down from here, you've got Mick, who's in pontoon two. That's another commanding swim, um, beautiful swim. And obviously down from that, you've got pontoon one, which is near the damn wall. Again, we've left that one empty, purely because there's only five of us on here. We've sort of spaced ourselves out to give us enough water. So carrying on with the tour of this side of the bank, uh, as you go down then, you're going into sort of like the anglers area. Um, this is where everyone prepares the meals and whatnot, and Keith and the, the bailiff and Alan, everyone based. The first, as you walk through the gate, the first thing you've got is some freezers. Now the freezers are for your, the anglers use, so you can bring your, obviously more bait that you need to bring, they can be put in the freezer and you can just take it as you want. You'll also notice as well, you've got English plugs there, so you can charge up your phone, your batteries for your bait boats or whatever you need to. Moving on, you've got some nice canopies as well. Obviously when the weather's nice, you do like to sit outside and enjoy a meal and a beer with all the lads. So um, that's all That's all that area there sorted for you. And then you've got the famous gravel bar. Uh, that's the place where um, you get your breakfast from, your evening meals. Uh, the food here is absolutely amazing. Um, the, the chefs are perfect. Um, they're very, they know what they're doing, that's for sure. We've had like kings this week, to be fair. So yeah, cannot moan at all. Um, and that sort of like brings you around onto the dam wall and then you're on the other side of the lake then, which we'll probably go around tomorrow and show you some more swims. But uh, yeah, like I say, I, just, I can't sort of rate this place highly enough. Um, the fishing's amazing, the food's awesome, and uh, the fish are just something else. But um, yeah, that sort of brings you up to date on Thursday. Um, I was gonna talk to you about rigs, so uh, I'll have a look at those this afternoon and just quickly run you through what we're, what we're doing here. Some of the rules as well that Keith uh, puts onto the lake. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all what we've got going on. So uh, I'll uh, stop waffling now, carry on drinking me brew, and I'll catch up with you shortly. here we are we're back at the oak swim just cast the two rods back out so before i cast the third one I'm just going to quickly show you the rigs that i've been uh, catching the fish on this week so there she is a very very simple rig it's the multi-rig setup one of my favorite rigs at the moment um, it seems to be doing the business for me at home and over here uh, you'll notice there that it's a very very low line pop-up i've literally that is the lowest i can get it when you're tying the loop for the actual uh, multi-rig it's literally the lowest it can be as it just scrapes past the bend of the hook when you're tying it. Um, it just gives it a nice presentation. It sits nice and low to the floor and it sort of sits in with all the freebies. It's not really popped up as such, you know, I don't like these two or two or even inch and two inch ones. That's literally half an inch and it just sits in amongst all the freebies nicely. Um, with that, it's gone on to a running rig system. Uh, you'll see there, obviously when you get to Moorlands, Keith will explain to you that uh, there's no lead clips here. So it doesn't matter if you've been using the same one for years and they're the safest ones on the planet. It doesn't matter, there's no lead clips at Moorlands. Same goes for any sort of, sort of any semi-fixed rig. They're not accepted here. So running rigs only, you can use a helicopter setup, but there can be no bead above the lead itself, uh, above the rig itself. So I've gone for the running rig system. Obviously there's quite a few on the market you can get your hands on, but I favor this one from Fox. Um, it sits perfectly, it doesn't tangle. Uh, you'll see there the actual lead itself it sits nice and tidy over the actual uh, sort of, if you like the tulip bead that's uh, been adapted to take it nice little uh, two ounce or two and a half ounce lead 
and then I've got the anti-tangle sleeves. These are the tungsten ones. And what I've done with that, I've turned it around. Go away, Mr. Fly. Um, go away, Mr. B. <laughs> um, as you can see, it's a tiny little um, multi-clip there, or quick links. And what I've done, I've spun it the other way around. By doing that, you're allowing to, t to house, if you like, the, uh, the anti-tangle sleeve, the tungsten ones, because they are quite thin. But by turning it the other way around, as long as you're pushing the actual tungsten sleeve right up over that little lip as well, then you literally, you're creating your hinge there and that'll sit away nicely. As soon as you hit the clip, it sits up and that sits down nicely on the leg bed. Obviously with that, I'm actually coupling it with a bit of uh, foam as well. So there's no tangles whatsoever. I will say, because it's so shallow, it's very important you hit the clip literally, if you can, half a foot above the water. You don't want to be hitting it high in the water or just as it hits or it's not good enough, I've wheel it back in, there's always tangles because it's so shallow. It doesn't have a chance for the rig to collect it, sort of correct itself as it's sort of feeling it down through the layers. Sometimes the rig can pull itself straight because it's quite shallow here, it doesn't have that time. So it's very important you're hitting that clip almost six inches above the water if you can. By doing that, you're allowing the rig to kick away and then it'll sit nice and tidy. Like I say, as soon as that foam melts, it will sit down nicely. And um, that's the presentation basically. Um, love the rig itself. So as you can see on the bottom of the lake there, it's just sitting pretty. If you look at the freebies that are just sitting around it as well, it's not really standing out amongst the crowd. It's all part of, uh, if you like, match the hatch. And that's what I've been doing the damage for me this week. Ooh. Middle rod, we've had a beep. Be nice to get one now, wouldn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the rig that's been doing it for me all week. Very, very simple, um, you know, no nonsense. And uh, yeah, obviously if you're coming here, have a look at that and good luck if you do. So here we are, last swim of the Southern Arm, Billy No Mates. In the name, you're all on your own up here. There's no other swims, and this is the, the sort of top of the venue, if you like. Uh, but I hope the fishery tour has given you an insight to how big the lake is. As I'm sure you agree, some of the swims are absolutely fantastic, and I'll be quite happy sitting in any number of them for, for a week with these. I will say about this swim here, you've got about two foot of water in front of you here. It is the shallowest part of the actual lake. Um, but we've seen this week, the fish do get up here. We've seen them in numbers turn up, We've seen them feeding as well. Um, it would be sort of the sort of a swim you could reel in off your main spots, come up here for an afternoon with a single rod, flick some sweet corn out, and I'm pretty sure you'd snare some. I, I'm no keeps had quite a number of fish out of this swim by doing just that actual that actual aspect of fishing. Uh, so yeah, that sort of brings to end the tour if you like. Um, what I'll do now, I'll pack the camera up, I'll head back round to the oak swim, get back behind the rods, get the rods back on their spots.
it is just gone 4 a.m. Got me uh, alarm set for six o'clock to get up to pack down and whatnot. But um, the middle alarm had other ideas and it got me up a bit earlier. So it, it's uh, 4 a.m. and uh, yeah, just gone into absolute meltdown. And uh, the fight just took me into every wee bed in the lake, I think. And I just felt it was going to come off any minute because it was just in one wee bed into another wee bed. And it was grating on the line. I was just, oh god, don't come off, don't come off. And literally after about probably f 10 minutes, which felt like an hour, um, we finally slipped the net under an awesome looking common. Um, it looks, if I had to guess the mate, it might go 4 -0. hopefully it might go 4 -0. But a uh, proper broad back humpy thing, nice and long as well. So um, yeah, good God knows what it could go, but um, it'd be nice if it finishes on a 40, that's for sure. Right, I'll uh, get the mat and everything sorted. I'll have to go and get me mate Mick up. He's gonna have to help us with this. But uh, yeah, buzzing, two hours to go and we've landed fish number 12. Good in there. Well, last knockings, literally two hours before we have to pack up. And that middle rod, the one that's been doing it all week for me, has gone yet again. This bloody common went in one wee, with, in one wee bed into another and uh, yeah, finally got me prize. And, uh, 47.12 It's a lovely lovely end to the week Hopefully he doesn't splash the lens because he's a bit lively But take a look at that absolute monster What a fish A beautiful awesome muscle pack common oh, Yes what a way to finish Absolutely buzzing I've had an amazing week And to finish with a top 40 like this is just unbelievable 12 fish for the week, all loving the live system, and, uh, and I'm loving this actual place itself, Moorlands, what an absolutely awesome venue, packed full of massive fish, and we haven't really got amongst the real big 50s, there's loads of them in here, but uh, like I say, to finish on this absolute cracker, I could not be happier, yes, come on the car. <laughs> Well, here we are, it is pack up day. Saturday morning, it's just gone 7 a.m. and uh, got a lovely 15 hour journey home. <sighs> Van's all ready to roll. So yeah, that's it really, all good things come to an end. Um, I've had an amazing week. Uh, I've had 12 fish up to 51 and uh, quite a few high 40s and then just to finish off a few hours ago with that 47 common was just the icing on the cake really um, yeah I've had an absolutely top top week just want to say a massive thank you to Keith and his family for looking after us they literally can't do enough for you while you're here they treat you like kings as long as you abide by the rules um, but uh, yeah it's been awesome absolutely love the place and cannot wait to get back and I think all the boys as well who's come on the trip they've had a great time they've had a few fish as well so all in all it's uh, one happy group but um, yeah, just want to say thanks for watching the blog. You know, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I got the message across. I just love catching fish, love being behind the rods. And uh, I don't care what size they are. It's just nice seeing that bobbin hit the blank and that screaming reel. So um, yeah, can't wait to get back on the bank really. Right then, 15 hours to go. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next blog.